everyone, it's Haley, and today I'm going to be talking about the books that I hope to read this winter. I love doing these little seasonal TBR piles. I think they're a lot of fun, and I definitely have a really good stack of books here for winter. In the winter time, when it's cold outside, for some reason, I tend to gravitate toward historical fiction. I can't really explain that. I have no idea why, but that is what it is. But I also really like to read fantasy generally. Now last year that wasn't really the case, but this year I definitely want to try and get to some of the fantasies that I have had for quite a while. So I've got a good mix of fantasy and historical fiction that I'm really excited for. So I'm super excited to once again be partnering with Care Of for today's video. Thank you so much to them for sponsoring me. They are such a great company that makes it really easy to take care of yourself. I just like when things Things are easy and they definitely make it easy. So if you aren't familiar with them, Care Of helps you find the vitamins and supplements that are right for you to achieve your health and fitness goals. So all you have to do to find out which vitamins and supplements will best help you to achieve your health and wellness goals is just take a short online quiz. It's basically like having a one-on-one -on -one consultation with a nutritionist. So they ask you more about your diet, your personal health goals, and your lifestyle, like all the things that they need to know in order to make this tailored plan for you where they will make recommendations for vitamins and supplements accordingly. They also have an eco-friendly mindset because all of their vitamin packs are compostable, which is so great. My own health and wellness is definitely something that has been in the forefront of my mind this January. I've really been working on making that a priority because I haven't before, but it's definitely something that going forward I want to improve upon. So I got the vitamin packs, which I love the fact that it's it's like the packaging for this is beautiful. Not only is it compostable, but it just is so easy to like just get it out of the slot every day and it's all packed nicely. I absolutely love it. It's so easy to take in the morning, but I got fish oil, which is to help maintain a healthy heart, vitamin D, which supports bone health, and ashwagandha, which supports muscle strength and recovery. In addition to that, I also got maca, which is the energy root. It supports fitness performance, and they sent me the cutest little blender bottle. You can never have enough of these. I have like five million but I absolutely love them. I use them all the time and that is perfect for the protein powder that I have from them from my last order. This January we're focusing on the small wins because those little victories really mean a lot and they add up and can help you to take these small steps that you need to take toward wellness and health. Personally, I have had the goal of moving my body every single day, whether that means it's just a quick 15 minute walk or I'm actually doing like some strength training or we we have now an exercise bike, whether I'm doing that, whatever it might be, I'm making sure that I am doing something to better myself every day and moving my body. I'm not only doing that for fitness and overall health, but also to try and have a little bit more energy. So if you are also focusing on energy or fitness this year or even sleep, then adding a daily vitamin that targets those goals can help you to make those long-term changes. I will have a link down below for you guys to take the care of quiz and see what vitamins or supplements they might recommend to you guys. So don't forget to click the link down below and you can use my code BOOKLAND50 for 50% 50 off of your first month. And thank you so much to Care Of for sponsoring today's video. I'm gonna be honest, there's really no formal organization for today's video. Sometimes I'll like organize it by genre, but I just decided not to do that today. But I will start out with the two books that I am currently reading. So first is Invictus by Ryan Groudon. I am super thrilled with this so far. I'm not very far into it, but Ryan Groudon's books just have a way of sucking me in. I don't know what it is, but Wolf by Wolf, obviously, you guys know, I have talked about quite a bit. This is very different than that. This is a sci-fi, but it also has a historical element to it, which is like my favorite thing. It kind of reminds me of Passenger by Alexandra Bracken, but I wasn't a huge fan of that one. This one I am enjoying a little bit more. Well, quite a bit more because I didn't really like Passenger that much, but I am on page 122. So it's just like there's the spaceship you travel through time and like they were just on a heist of the sinking Titanic. Like they're just going on these heists throughout time and 
it's just fascinating. Like I love all the different historical periods. I love all the perspectives that are in here. It's just been really great. This is not a wrap up though, but yes, this is definitely a book that I had wanted to read this winter and I just decided to pick it up on a whim and I'm really glad that I did. The other book that I'm currently reading is Legend Born by Tracy Dion. This is taking me longer than I would like it to, to be honest. My bookmark is not in an accurate spot, but I am listening to the audiobook for this one. And I think I just haven't had a lot of listening time lately, but this is definitely like a mix of like City of Bones. I mean, it's not even a mix of City of Bones. It's kind of like City of Bones in the fact that it's an urban fantasy, demons, all of that stuff. So the main character, she is grieving the loss of her mother and she is going to this university. She is a high school student, but there is this stay away program. So she is taking that. And on her first night there, she ends up witnessing a magical attack and she just gets caught up in this whole world like Merlin, Arthur, King Arthur, all of those things. So it's definitely a very interesting magic system. I am enjoying it. I just haven't had a ton of time to dedicate to listening to it. So those are the books that I am currently reading, but just getting to the rest of the pile. First, we have The Passion of Dulce by Julie Berry. Once again, an author that I kind of fell in love with last year. I mean, I only read one of her books, but this is the other book of hers that I have. So Lovely War, which I read last year, was my favorite book of 2020. It was so amazing. I just loved it so much. And I've heard amazing things about The Passion of Dulce. I just, for some reason, haven't read it. So this is a different sort of historical fiction because it's set in, I think it's 1243 or something. I thought it said on the back, but it doesn't. She also has so many books, which I did not realize. Actually, those are books by different authors. <laughs> I was like, she has so many books, but it's just recommending similar books. That's fun. I like that they did that. Between Shades of Grey is in here, The Rose and the Dagger, Sacred Lies of Minot Bly. There's a lot of these that either I have read, ooh, except Matched by Ali Condi is in here and I didn't really like that one, but they're either ones that I want to read or I don't understand that comparison. Anyways, they're either ones that I've wanted to read or they are ones that I have read and really enjoyed. Anyways, this doesn't say, but okay, so it's 13th century and it's set in France. And I've just, I've never read anything in that time period. So that is very intriguing to me. And the main character of this is running away because she is being threatened to be burned for heresy. So that's just, I just want to read it. Like I've heard amazing things, even more than Lovely War. I had heard about this one and I don't know why it's taken me so long, especially after loving Lovely War so much. So I think that this winter will be the time for me to finally read it. Next up is The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. So I've talked about this book like quite a bit recently because I just saw it everywhere. And then I ended up getting myself a copy and it feels like a great winter read because I've heard it's just like a book of fantasy for book lovers and that sounds amazing like I love that but this book I literally I don't think I've seen one bad review so I'm kind of skeptical going into it like my expectations I'm trying to lower them but one of my friends read it and really loved it and I've just seen like numerous people that I know who love it and also people that I don't know I think everyone has loved it like literally I can't think of one bad review that I've seen so skeptical but if it is as good as everyone says it is, then like, I'm excited for it. I really hope that I can get to it this winter because it does, it's just something about the coziness of like a fantasy and particularly a fantasy for book lovers just sounds perfect for the winter season, especially while we're in lockdown. It just sounds like it would be a really great escape. That really is why I have a lot of fantasy on here right now. I'm just looking for the escapism, honestly. Next is kind of more of a sci-fi, but it is Sky Hunter by Marie Lu. I also acquired this book recently, but it is like such a beautiful cover. So it always stands out to me on my bookshelf. Like it is so gorgeous. It also, I discovered this in my book haul. Like it has under the jacket designs. Oh, I love it. But this seems like it's kind of going to have some commentary on historical things, particularly, why can't I think of the word? There is a, a specific word for this, but conquests, I guess, is like what I'm thinking. Basically how like England and everything, like just, to, is it imperialism? Why can I not think of the word? But basically that whole age where, I mean, it's been going on throughout history, but where like you just go and you're like, this is my land now, which, obviously is very problematic and not okay. And that is coming from me who lives in Canada. So I also live on stolen land. But this is about 
a world where there is just one place that hasn't been overtaken by the like greater power but there's also like people when you leave that free place that last free place there's like monsters and stuff on the outside so I think it's going to be a really interesting read. Marie Lu, I've read quite a few of her books before. I'm kind of behind right now, but I really enjoyed what I've read. Like, I don't think I've ever really been disappointed. So this one definitely seems like a super interesting and unique concept. It's gonna bug me that I can't think of what that's called. Colonialism, why am I so dumb? Literally, that is the word for it, isn't it? I don't know, I still, I still am not entirely sure, but I know it's, yeah. You know what I'm trying to say. I know all the comments are going to be telling me what I'm trying to say, but I can't think of things right now. Next is a book that has been on so many TBRs, and it's one of those books like I was really excited about the concept when I heard about it, but I just never ended up picking it up. But that is The Light Between Worlds by Laura E. Weymouth. I just really want to read this so then I have read it and like I'm done with it. Not that I'm not excited for it, but it is about these characters who they basically went to this world that like sounds like Narnia, it's the woodlands, and then they come back and they are in the London Blitz, so London during World War II. I think you can kind of see if you're familiar with Narnia where I'm getting the Narnia vibes from here, but it's kind of like partially recounting their time in the woodlands in this fantastical world and partially them trying to adjust to the real world, especially like in the state that it's in. So it's dealing with siblings, like it does seem like something I would really like. I just, I don't know why. I tried reading it once and I never ended up finishing it, so I'm not not sure why I have had such weird luck with this one but I will probably listen to the audiobook because it has some like big passages that are written in italics and I find that kind of hard to read so I think the audiobook will be best for this one for me. Speaking of a book that I've talked about quite a bit so The War Outside by Monica Hesse. So I was supposed to read this for one of my bookmas vlogs the one where I read They Went Left but I ended up saving it because I didn't want to read two historical fictions by the same author with in one week I realized after finishing they went left I didn't want to get them mixed up like they don't deal with the same topic but I just knew I would get them mixed up constantly like I have a few books where they're kind of similar and I've read them too close together that I constantly get missed mixed up like the babysitter's coven and what's the other one these witches don't burn I think is the other one those two I read like back to back and I get them mixed up constantly I cannot tell them apart but anyways so this is a World War II historical fiction but it is set in Texas and it is set at an internment camp and you have a Japanese prisoner and a German prisoner and it is about their day-to-day -day life there. So definitely not going to be an easy read but for sure one that I think it is time that I get to. But I think before I get to this one I want to read, I'm just gonna grab it now, We Are Not Free by Tracy Chi because this is actually an own voices story that deals with that same topic. So it follows 13 Japanese Americans and their experiences as they are rounded up and brought to these camps. So I have heard amazing things about this, particularly from Monica Kim. I think I included this in my January TBR, but either way, it's for sure one that has been like top of my radar recently. It's definitely not 13, it's 14, that's my bad. But yeah, I think this is going to be like definitely a really difficult book to read, but I'm super eager to read it at the same time because I want to know more about that. Next up is Ray Bearer by Jordan Ifuko. So I recently, once again, Again, this is a book that I got recently but it's about this character who just wants like she hasn't really experienced love or familial love she has this woman who is her mother but she's known as the lady but she's mostly absent except there's this opportunity to get closer to the prince and the lady wants to use this to have her kill the prince like it's a plot but the main character sees it as an opportunity to finally have a bond with someone and finally have that bond that she's hoping for and it just it sounds like heartbreaking like it's going to be a sad fantasy but also just a very fascinating concept like I don't think I've ever really heard of one like this before so I'm eager to read it because I love you know unique and new fantasies. Next is The Ending by Game by Elizabeth Wine. This is the newest book by her which I didn't know was coming out at all. It was a lovely surprise but I have read all of her books so far I think so she is the author of the codename Verity duology except now I think it's like a whole series of companion novels. It confuses me. However, 
I love Codename Verity and Rose Under Fire. Those two books are fantastic historical fictions. She mostly focuses on pilots, which is super interesting, but in this case it's dealing with this machine. It's like this machine that a British officer risks his life to hide it. No, it's a German officer actually. Yes, so it's a German pilot who ends up getting this machine, which is an Enigma machine, and it will allow British intelligence to translate German messages. So he ends up risking his life to bring it to Britain. And that's just like the risk involved there sounds Oh my gosh, this is going to be definitely a high stakes, difficult read. Next up is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. So if you haven't heard of this book now, I don't know where you've been because it has been absolutely everywhere, but I have once again really heard nothing but great things about it. I think the only critique I've really heard is it's kind of boring throughout it, but it does, like, it's worth it, so. I don't know, we'll see. My sister did read this one actually and she enjoyed it. So it's kind of a mix of like fantasy and historical. It's about a main character, Addie LaRue, obviously, but she ends up making a deal with the devil where she will be able to live forever. But the consequence of that is that she will be forgotten by everyone she ever meets. That like, I just, literally I say this every time I talk about this book, but how would you write that? Like, it just exhausts me to even think about it. So super eager to see how that ends up playing out like I just am so intrigued by this book honestly. Next is A Song of Wraiths and Rune by Roseanne A. Brown. So this sounds super intriguing because it is about a character who he has the job of killing the crown princess in order to get freedom for him and his sisters. He's finally able to leave his war-torn home but the princess is not going to go down so easily because she actually has plans to resurrect her mother from the dead. So there there's a lot going on here, but there's so much potential for a really cool and interesting story. Definitely an interesting dynamic there between these two characters, so I just want to see how that's going to play out. Next is The Black Kids by Christina Hammonds Reed. So this is a historical fiction set in 1991, and it is all about the Rodney King riots in LA. So you deal with the main character who has just been living her life like she has a great group of friends, but then all of a sudden she becomes becomes this other. She becomes one of the black kids instead of just one of the girls. So this is definitely going to be once again a really educational read and I love reading books like that that are going to teach me something and this book is going to be no exception. I've heard some really amazing things, love the cover for it too, and I don't think I've ever really read a 90s historical fiction. It's weird that 90s is historical fiction because I was born in 95 but like you know it's true it is historical. Like it was it was quite a while ago. Next up is a book that I would really like to finally get to and it kind of connects to The House in the Cerulean Sea because it is The Starless Sea by Aaron Morgenstern. Not the sea, like not, that's not why they connect. Why they connect is because they are bookish fantasies. Like this is set in a library. I started reading it at one point and I just, I didn't end up finishing it, but I think it would be perfect for like, you know, a cold winter's day. It's just so big that it intimidates me. Like how many pages is this thing? I mean, it's only like 500 pages, but the font is just so small and it's like so tall. I think that's why I haven't really gotten to it yet. But I, once again, a book that I have heard some incredible things about. So I hope that I can join in on that hype. And finally is Orphan Monster Spy by Matt Colleen. I've had this book for a hot second now and I've always really wanted to read it just for some reason haven't picked it up yet, but it is about a Jewish girl who risks her life infiltrating a Nazi boarding school. So I just, I know that this is going to be super hard to read and definitely one where I'm going to be on the edge of my seat. So when I'm in the mood for something like that, I will definitely be picking this one up. So those are the books that I'm hoping to read this winter over the cold months that are going to be covered in snow. I feel like they will definitely get me through that, get me through the winter lockdown, hopefully. But as usual, I will probably veer kind of away from this TBR because that's, that's just how I am. I can't follow a TBR for the life of me, but that's fine. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thank you once again to Care Of for sponsoring me today. Don't forget to check them out in the link down below. I definitely recommend it. And I will see you guys in my next video soon. Bye.